The Republican National Committee using computer-generated video to show photos that have gone viral. Telltale signs they are AI generated. Millions of social media users have seen a series of AI generated deep fake photos. A viral fake picture, the fabricated photo posted to social media. Artificial intelligence. We talk about it a lot on this show. Tonight, turned out a new scam using artificial intelligence to clone voices. Deep fake photos like these swirled around social media. Artificial intelligence could upend our lives as dramatically as the Industrial Revolution. Anybody can use it to, to impact. The year is 1964. While working at MIT, computer scientist Joseph Weizenbaum makes a program he calls ELISA. It would ask you how your day was and act like a mediocre therapist. It wasn't perfect, but it was impressive for the time, and little did he know, it would eventually be considered the first computer chatbot. A lot's changed since 1964 though, and the idea of artificial intelligence like what we see today was a complete fever dream. Wizard technologies like CNNs, RNNs, and GANs have led up to the greatest innovation of the 21st century, the large language model. Given an input, a large language model such as ChatGPT will use a lot of math and data to figure out what it thinks is the best answer to your question. Ask ChatGPT what you should have for dinner tonight, and it'll give you suggestions and recipes and all of that with a polite, cheery tone. This is unimaginably powerful, and I'm so shocked and surprised that no one has thought of using it for malice. Oh, wait! In 2018, actor, comedian, and filmmaker Jordan Peele made this video in collaboration with BuzzFeed. Former President Barack Obama giving a heartfelt warning about the dangers of AI and how it can be used to make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. This entire video is fake. BuzzFeed and Peel's production company used a combination of Adobe After Effects and the AI face swapping tool Fake App. And this was in 2018, four years before ChatGPT would be released to the general public. The problem is so much worse now. It's becoming to the point where anybody with surface level AI knowledge and a passion for programming can cause irreversible damage to the world of reliable news. So I sought out to do just that. This is the Dolus Daily, a proof of concept procedural fake news website that will generate and post completely fake news articles. Every five minutes, this website will cook up a new article and post it with zero hesitation. And it's not that crazy complicated. Let me break it down. The idea came to me when I read this article by Julian Bilk about generating web pages in semi-real time. His implementation was pretty simple for the sake of the article, but it gave me an idea. In theory, it seemed pretty simple. Write some code that generates an article, and then store it, and then turn it into a website. I just had to make it work. So I opened VS Code and got to work. The first problem I ran into was getting the AI to come up with its own ideas for articles. On paper, it seemed pretty easy, just ask the AI. But the results were very strange. Notably, Joe Biden eats babies. Dozens of articles this thing generated about how Joe Biden eats babies. After some more work, I settled on a predetermined list of topics that the AI could then use to generate a more specific article. But working with LLMs like this is really annoying, because the output is only as organized as you could get ChatGPT to organize an output. So either you have to do a lot of prompts and pray it all works out, or use a lot more code to organize the output of a single long prompt. A single long prompt, like generate a totally random fake news parody article that sounds really concerning and would make people want to click. It's then given an idea from our list and some more important modern context. The output is then cleaned up and boring names like John, Jane, and Smith are replaced with more realistic ones. The article then gets stored into a folder, but what about the thumbnail? My original plan was to use a generative image AI like Stable Diffusion, but results were slow and unsatisfactory. Instead, I opted to pair every article on our list with a keyword that would then be used to find a stock image off of either Pixabay or Unsplash's free image library. With the article making process complete, we just need to make it look good. Or bad. I don't know if you've been on a news website recently, 
but they don't look good. Random arrangements of articles, serif fonts, useless information, but god forbid it doesn't look like a newspaper, while managing to be as overstimulating and bad as possible. This was the hardest part. When I started writing the video, the website looked clean and boring. Until my friend repeatedly pointed out how much worse it could be. So here is the final product. This is my statement piece on why we should be scared of AI. This, ooh, a newsletter. Sorry, absurd ads, irrelevant fake stock prices, and of course, ridiculous news articles. But can it actually fool anyone? So this is a website that procedurally generates fake news articles using AI. Okay. I thought showing features would be more credible than just getting my friends' okay. reactions. It's a little parody-like. <laughs> <laughs> an ambassador. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Okay, hold on. People would believe this if they read this stuff. Yeah. I would imagine people would look at this and be like, what? An outrage. I'm going to take a look at this. See, that's normally my clue. Is if it's that length? I don't think so. No way. What's your hope? To make the video. <laughs> as soon as somebody reads something like this, I think the real danger is it, it really is in our ability to define what truth is. The freshman in high school would read one of these articles and be like, well, it's got a date that it was published, it has an author, right? But then they, you see these, these advertisements that are <laughs> grandma gravy, they're clearly made up. But some people will just, you know, believe it to be true. No, I think it's the implications are like striking to me, or that somebody can just generate fake news and just have AI just hit people with whatever biased fake news they want is kind of scary. They're gonna take what that says at face value, especially if it looks, you know, has all the keywords they're looking for. So all of these things we tell them to look for, they're here, you know, which is kind of yeah. concerning because it's like, oh crap, well, I mean, is what I'm teaching them about this whole how to evaluate a reliable, credible source, that's gonna change now because people have the means to make something look like a reliable, credible source and not be my students read in Fahrenheit 451, is a book is good because you can tell a book to wait. It's there waiting for you to come back to it. This, that, those things, they don't wait for you. They demand things from you. They demand your attention. They demand your time. We're going to lose a whole group of people for that. They're just consumed by this type of content. What, 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 should, what, should, what should we do what about this? So the one thing that I would say we never learned, taught, was the responsibility that has to come with it. But we have designed these things to almost counter hu our humanity. And there was a documentary I watched where it was like, we're all worried about the time that AI overcomes man's strengths, but we're never concerned about when AI will overcome man's weaknesses. And it's already done that. But yeah, responsibility at its core, I think that's the key to building this type of technology in a way that helps humanity without stripping that humanity away from them. So, there you go. What do you think uh, we should do as a collective? I don't know. I mean, I think that it's not really about what restriction on what people can do that starts to limit speech, free speech, you know, whether you're having somebody else generate it for you or not. But I think there needs to be education. I threw this together in about two months in my free time just for the sake of this video. Now imagine, if you will, if someone with real malicious intent tried to make this work. Just off the top of my head, I could think of several improvements. Um, you could post new articles on Instagram, you could use Twitter to see what people are talking about, um, you, could, you could just actually implement a real political bias. But what's important here is media literacy, knowing when to believe what you read. Khan Academy has a fantastic free course on social media literacy, and while I was writing this video, they came out with a new course on AI literacy. These are fantastic resources that I cannot recommend enough. Propaganda is the people's poison, and knowledge is the antidote. I'll be releasing the source code to Duelist Daily over on my GitHub page with a few warnings and anecdotes. Feel free to play around with it, and don't feel free to make it better. 
I'm adding this after I filmed and edited everything. I wanted to thank uh, Ms. NP, Mr. D, and Mr. R for sitting down with me and letting me ramble about my little creation. The most valuable and maybe scary part of this experience was getting those real and personal stories of how they felt about what AI was capable of. Uh, if you just want to experience the website and all of its silliness, I put a demo page up on my website, uh, link in the description, covered in warnings. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, subscribe.